All right, so we finished part A. I didn't make it gray, but you know, it solves the same problem. Now I want to do it again, but construct it with a relative frequency histogram. Okay, well, um, I could do the cheating method, which is the copy and paste, and I know that, but I figure it's not a bad idea to kind of do it all again, just to remind yourselves of all the steps, right? Always helps to see it twice. All right, so I'm gonna highlight the relative frequency column. Not all of it, not the whole column, just the relative frequencies. As a matter of fact, I'm going to highlight the word relative frequency this time so I can show you it's slightly different. Because when you highlight a word, it makes that the chart title, which of course isn't really what I want as the chart title, but I can click up in there and add the word histogram of games played. Makes my life easier. All right, click down here. I'm going to delete that legend. I don't need it. I'm going to make it green because I want to. Um, I'm going to need titles on my axes, so I'm going to go down here, horizontal, games played, enter, axis vertical, it's relative frequency. Okay, now remember there's two big problems. The horizontal axis is wrong and the bars are not touching. So let me start with the horizontal axis. So I'm going to click on the bars right click choose select data edit the horizontal category axis labels and put in the numbers 4 through 12 don't highlight numbers of games if you do let me show you it turns it into number of games as your first bar don't do that highlight just the numbers 4 through 12 okay okay and then right click again choose format data series this time change your gap to zero Personally, I want a little bit of a border, so I'm going to add a solid line black border, and I'm going to make it 1.25. Close. And there we go. Now I've seen it twice, so hopefully you'll be better at it. Um, let's go back and see what we got to answer. All right, so we've made these two graphs, although that one I made blue, but whatever. So name a couple of ways these histograms are different than bar graphs. Ooh, good question. All right, histograms are for quantitative data. And so the horizontal axis is essentially a number line, not just a list of categories with no order to them as in bar charts, right? Now, hopefully that makes sense. Four has to be lower than five, has to be lower than six because of the way number lines and numbers work. I mean, when we we're back with looking at M&M color, I mean, who decides if blue is first or brown is first or whatever? I mean, alphabetical order doesn't mean that, you know, higher lettered categories are better than lower lettered categories. It's not how it works. But over here in this, you can tell that a player that plays 12 games is doing more <laughs> right than a player who plays four games right? it's just, it doesn't, that's just how it is okay no that doesn't mean they're better in at all over all time it just might mean that they're better for the season right age and all that and playing ability enter into that maybe somebody's injured who knows all right um the other thing to keep in mind is that bar charts all right, in bar charts the um the bars do not have to touch. As a matter of fact, they don't touch. Do not touch. But in histograms, they have to. Right? They must, because every possible numerical value, numerical, oh my goodness, of the variable, in our case, um, games played, has to be accounted for on the horizontal axis. Nobody can fall between the cracks. Hold on. There we go. No value can be allowed to fall through cracks. There can't be any cracks. Right, you're either in this bin or you're in this bin. That's it. No gaps. 